Hello everyone and welcome to series reviewing book Team Python. In this video we are going to review chapter 12, tuples. We are going to learn what are tuples, why we need them and finally we are going to compare them with list and dictionary. This video is organized in two sections. The first is short overview and presentation and the second one is going to be a quick demo. So what are tuples? They are seconds of values. The picture really well illustrates the tuple and how it's organized. You can see that this built-in date type in Python. Values can be from any type. We have nested tuple inside a tuple. And also the values are indexed by integers starting from zero. Tuples are immutable, which is really important. How we can create tuples? We can create tuples by providing values separated by commas. Parentheses is not required, but if you want to emphasize that this tuple, you can add them. Creating a single item tuple can be done by value followed by a comma. For an empty tuple, you can use the built-in function tuple. What are the usages of tuples? They have several methods. Tuple assignment. Also, tuples can be used like return values. And they help us to provide variable length arguments for functions. We have two methods for tuples. The first one is count, which is returning how many times a given value is found in a given tuple. And then we have index, which is returning the index or the position of a given value in a tuple. To demonstrate this, we can see that we have tuple S1 with values 1, 2, 3, and 4. Applying method count is going to return 1 with argument 1 because we have only once value 1 in this tuple. Using method index with 1, it's going to return 0, which is the position of this value in the tuple. To test yourself, can you pause the video and guess what are going to be the answers for S2 and S3? You can share the answers in the comment section. What is tuple assignment? There is really good formula explaining this. On the left we have tuple of variables. On the right we can have tuple of expressions or we can have seconds. So let's see this in a simple example. If we have email address and we split this address into two parts, we can assign them to two variables by using tuple assignment. On the left you can see that we have tuple and those tuple have two variables, uname and domain. At the end those variables will have values from the result of this expression. We can see one more example, again applying this formula, this time is going to be for a sequence. We have a list of four values and we're going to assign those values to four variables. At the end you can see that each of those variables have exactly the same value as from this list and it's important to mention that number on the left should be equal as on the right, otherwise you get an error. How we can use tuple assignment? We can use it to swap two variables in Python. So let's say that you have two variables, a equal to 4 and b equal to 3. If you like to swap their values, we can use conventional programming by adding third variable and reassigning the values which is going to end in a equal to 3 and b to 4 or we can use tuple assignment with one line just to swap their values and as you can see this is much more concise and easier to understand but you may be confused how tuple is immutable and we can swap variables values of two variables sorry this is because we are passing variables we are not changing the tuple, we are changing the values of the variables, which is really important. So another usage of 
tuples is that they can be used like return values. Let's say that we have built-in function div mod. We can read its documentation and we can find that we can return tuples from this built-in method. So once we use this function, we will get a result which is a tuple. Then in order to access the values from this result, we need to use the tuple notification. Also, we can build our function and return a tuple. You can see that we have function min max, which is going to take one argument t, and it's going to return two values, which are separated by comma. And this is just tuple. Variable length argument tuples. So when you want to define new function, but you don't know the number of arguments, you can use variable length arguments. The parameter should start with asterisk and it's going to gather all the arguments in a tuple. So let's demonstrate this with example. We can define the function print all. We can use variable length argument, which is marked with asterisk and then we can invocate function built-in print in order to print the result. This is how it's going to look in real life. And finally, let's compare tuple with dictionary and list. So to remind ourselves, list is ordered sequence of objects. Tuple can be considered as immutable list, set unique list, and finally, dictionary is pair of key and values. And this is really important to be remembered and to distinguish all those built-in data types in Python. So it's time for a demo. It's time to practice what we learned so far. You can find all the content of the chapter in this notebook, which I'm going to share in the description below. Again, you can find the definition of topo in the a light blue rectangle. To start, we are going to create a few tuples. We are creating tuple with elements A, B, C, and so on. We can add parentheses to explicitly say that we have tuple. Adding a comma at the end of a value is going to create a tuple. Skipping the comma is going to create a string. And this important difference, creating empty tuple. If you pass sequence, string is considered a sequence, then we are going to have tuple of the elements of this sequence. So can you guess what is going to be the answer here? If you say this one, then you are a good programmer and you are following what we are describing in this video. In order to access the elements, as we said already, we need to use indexes, which are going to work also for lists. The first element is A and has index 0. We can use slice operator for lists in order to get a range of elements. And as you can see, the right one is exclusive. It means it's not going to take three elements. We are going to take only two. As we mentioned already, the poles are immutable, so we cannot modify the position of 0 in the tuple. But we can create new tuple, which is combination of the two previous tuples. So here we have new tuple, which is capital A. And finally, you can see that we have new tuple, which has capital A and the rest of the first tuple. Also, we can do a comparison of two tuples and we're going to get a boolean value, which is a really interesting feature for tuples. As we saw, we can change variables by using conventional programming with reassigning the values with third variable. Or we can use tuple assignment by providing tuple variables on the left and expression on the right or some sequence. And the result is going to be exactly the same. If you like to learn more about swapping two variables, or Tower of Hanoi, you can follow this link and find interesting game which is about moving disks from the left to the right 
and this important topic in programming. As we mentioned, number on the left should be equal to the right, otherwise we get an error. The two examples which we saw earlier, you can see that putting a variable followed by another variable is tuple. Using a list to assign multiple variables, we can use the variables without the tuple. And this is really important if you like to assign multiple variables to multiple values. The next topic is about tuples like return values. Let's say that we have built-in function divmod. You can find the documentation of this function here by using shift and tab. We need to pass two arguments, x and y, and we're going to get quotient and reminder, which is a tuple. This is the quotient part, and this is the reminder, if we pass 7 and 3. In order to understand how a given function is working, I suggest that you are going to consult the documentation. Also, we can define our function and put tuple like a return value. In this case, we have one parameter t, and we're going to return the min and also the maximum as a tuple. In this way, you can use tuple to return multiple values from a single function. Another way is to have variable length arguments, and this time instead of returning values, we are working with arguments. Let's say that you want to create a function which needs to have variable length of the arguments, or you're not sure about the arguments. In this case, we can use asterisk before the argument name. It's very common to use IRGS and we are defining a function which can take any number of arguments. In order to call the function we can use values, multiple values, seconds or whatever you like and then we can see that this function is going to print everything from the argument. The opposite of gather is scatter. So let's say that you want to do the reverse. DivMod is expecting to have two arguments as input. If we pass a tuple with two elements, we will get an error because we expect to have two arguments. In order to make it work, we need to use the scatter or add the asterisk before the tuple. And then you can see that we get a result because the tuple is scattered to two elements. I suggest that you need to consult each time with the function and how it's working in order to be sure what is going on. In this case we can pass multiple arguments, but for some we cannot. So all the time you're using something, be sure that you know how it's working. So now let's discuss about list and tuples. Let's say that we have a string which is s and we have list t. So these are two sequences and we can use method zip in order to loop in parallel through them. And we are going to get a zip object. To see how it's uh, going the loop we can use for and see that we have tuples. So using a method zip is going to return tuple of the iterated sequences in parallel. In order to use them you can convert them to a list of tuples and then you can iterate or access them whatever you like to do. If there is a difference between the two uh, two sequences in their length, then we are going to get the shorter one. So in this case, we skip the E because it's the difference in the length between the, those two sequences. Um, if you like to traverse list of tuples, then we can use tuple of variables and we can access them 
а за Normal Variables then in the for loop. Now let's say that we would like to compare two sequences T1 and T2 element wise meaning comparing the first element of the first to the first of the second. We can build a function which is going to loop through them in parallel. We are going to use the assignment to get the values in two different variables and finally we are going to compare them. Depending on the result we are going to return true or false. So, if you like to get index and value for a given sequence, we can use method enumerate. You can find what is doing in the doc string. Just to remind that string is considered like a sequence, so in this case we are going to enumerate to A with index 0. You can find the results here, then 1, B and so on. And now let's cover dictionaries and tuples. We can create a dictionary by using curly brackets and providing pairs of key and value. In this case we have uh, A0, B1. To get all the elements of a dictionary we can use method items and we are getting list of tuples of all the pairs of this dictionary. We can print their values as you can see here. The order of a dictionary is not important and you can see that we can create dictionary with completely different order. We can see here how we can easily create a dictionary by using a zip method and a range. And you can find that we have simple way to create a dictionary by using combination of several different functions. It's important to mention that you can use tuple like key for a dictionary and you cannot do the same for a list. You cannot use a list like key for a dictionary. You can read more here and finally we can compare tuple and dictionaries. You can find some interesting uh, information here and I would like to share one resource which is comparing a list set tuple and dictionary. You can find the definition which we saw earlier. In this article you can find the operations, performance comparison and so on. There is code samples for each of them and the most common operations, how you can create them and what you can do with them. Finally you can find a table which is comparing list and dictionary side by side how you can create something, how you can add items, how you can access and so on. And this is all for this chapter tuples. If you have some questions, suggestions or ideas, please share them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and see you next time.